a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel i say may god bless all of you now in jesus name amen i get video away i want to present to una this very moment and i'm going to follow now they watch the video after we don't watch them together make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now he has rejected the judgment of a federal high court in kano declaring votes scored by the governor-elect of abia state alex oti as a waste in a statement, the party described the judgment as inconsequential and laughable, adding that it holds no water. The party argues that the court lacks the jurisdiction to entertain an election matter at a time when elections have since been concluded and winners emerged. The acting national publicity secretary of the party, Obiora Ifo, says the ruling is the handiwork of suspended members of the party loyal to the acting deputy national chairman, Lamidi Akbakwa. The judgment issued by MN Yunusa also affects all Labour Party candidates in Kano and Abia states. The judge held that the emergence of the Labour Party candidates in Abia and Kano states was not in compliance with the provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act. He said the emergence of the candidates breached legal provisions that required the party to submit its membership registers to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, within 30 days before conducting its primary elections ahead of the 2023 general elections. To make sense of uh, these uh, latest developments, we are now being joined by national uh, by Frank Chete, who is uh, our Arise News in-house legal analyst. And pretty much later, I'll be joined by uh, the Labour Party's uh, Kende Edu to uh, make uh, clear this. Uh, let, uh, Frank, good to see you. You know, some of the key concerns uh, uh, going across a lot of Nigerians will be uh, this particular judgment. Explain it to people in lucid terms because uh, uh, there seem to be some lot of misunderstanding about this news. Now, help us make sense of what this Kano judgment uh, concerning Labour Party and its candidate in Kano and Abia State is about. You know, anytime there is a doubt about what is the law and what is the interpretation of any section of a statute or the constitution or any written agreement, you actually approach the court with a procedure known as originating summons. For the court to simply state what the state of the law is or with regards to the proper insight or interpretation as to that provision. In this case, the provision is section 77, subsection 3, that requires a political party to submit it's the list of its candidate, a list of its members to INEC 30, within 30 days before it holds its primaries. And that, as a matter of fact, that was brought before the court, the Labour Party didn't do with regards to Kano State and, to, and with regards to all other states, including the entire 36 states actually, but with specific, specific uh, 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 you know, concern to Kano State and Abia State. Now, what the, the, and this is it's important that we at all times respect whatever the court proclaims. It doesn't matter whether you like it, whether it affects you negatively or not. In this case, the court looked at whatever was submitted to it, which is constitutionally bound to do, and makes a declaration, not necessarily an order. A declaration, just the way it is, it states the law that this is the way the law is. Just the way you're stating it now. Exactly. And then it says that if any party, particularly Labour Party, does not comply with so that particular provision, it means that whatever that proceeds from a primary election that it conducted would be null and void and such votes will be wasted. It didn't go further than that. And that is the way it is. It refused to make further consequential orders. For example, it didn't have to declare the election
election of any candidate to be null and void. He also didn't have to declare that consequent upon the failure of the party to comply with that provision, and as such, uh, it means another person should replace the other person or the other. No. So, thankfully, the court simply just gave an elucidation of uh, the state of the law with regards to compliance. But I must add quickly, because when we talk about compliance and we look at it with, in, in, with a stricto senso approach, it will not be appropriate. Because we argue all the time, considering Section one, 135 of the Electoral Act, that keeps talking about substantial compliance, that INEC, for example, needs not, you know, totally comply with every scintilla of the, the, the Electoral pro pro Provisions, I mean, Electoral Act, and that so long as it makes some mistakes, but it substantially, substantially complies with all the provisions, and so and no election can be declared void in that case. So you can't expect, you can't be holding these standards and then simply say, simply, uh, because a, 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 a political party did not submit the list of its candidates to which it can actually sub submit subsequently, and then you cancel um, primary elections that have been conducted with billions of naira, the court reasonably doesn't do that. But what it has done is to you know, serve as a warning to legal officers of political parties that they need to man their departments very well. They need to get young lawyers to read between the lines of these laws and then create checklists for these political parties because it's a misnomer and it's actually a minus for a political party to overlook such fundamental things like submitting the list of uh, members to INEC as at within the time frame. You, you know, I, I think you, you've stated this and uh, I'll be, uh, I think we'll, we'll wait to hear from the National Legal Advisor because the way you've made it look so simple, uh, perhaps, you know, politicians, as they say, they think quite differently, even if you're a lawyer and advisor in the political party, uh, you should also uh, sometimes think differently. In this case now, uh, stretching it, uh, the candidates uh, that have emerged victorious in the affected states, uh, you say the court didn't say anything explicitly about the Absolutely eviction. nothing. Take, for example, the person that should have been most worried, Alex Oti, is, is, is not because he's covered by the legal processes and particularly by the Electoral Act. He's been given, he's been declared the winner of the elections in Abia State. He's been given the certificate of return. Now, the, sec the provisions of Section 138 of the Electoral Act, very fantastic position, which is peculiar to Nigeria, is that anybody who has been declared a winner of any election uh, should go ahead to be sworn in, irrespective of whenever, even irrespective of when, even if a court declares that uh, his election is void, mm. even if he has been sacked expressly by a court, the law says that so long as he files an appeal within the time limit of 21 days, he is, he is entitled to enjoy the benefits of the office. That is, Alex Oti will be sworn in on, uh, on, on May 29, and then he will continue to remain as governor until he dispenses with any appeal that, you know, challenges his election. All right. In this case, this really doesn't challenge his election expressly because no order was made. However, the court has, is very clear that the Labour Party was at fault and breach, has breached the Electoral Act okay. and has let, actually let, let, let also me. stated <clears throat> the consequences of breaching the Electoral you Act. Know, speaking of which, now, let's look at what's happening now. At the moment, we have the election tribunals going on and now this is another court in Kano. Oh, well, now, so doesn't this also look as if uh, the, uh, there is a usurpation of the electoral tribunals? I don't think so and that it is not so. There are pre-election matters that can be filed within 14 days after the happening of any action that you know borders on the electoral act or electoral process. Now in this case any Nigerian has a right to approach a Nigerian court to interpret the law. That is what the judiciary does, nothing more than that. So it, what has happened in this case is that uh, Ibrahim Haruna, an individual, has approached the court, uh, the court to say, please tell us whether or not the failure of Labour Party to comply with the provisions of Section 77, Subsection 3, affects this, this to this extent that the, 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 what happened, whatever proceeded, whatever emanated from the primary elections that were conducted in non in non compliance with section 77 are void and uh, that's and then the, the court simply agreed with him and stated it so but what consequences 
of, of what consequences would that be? Nothing much because the court actually, the, the, the legal process is like this. When you approach a court for a declaration to state what the law is and then you support that with a set of facts in the affidavit, now you also now ask the court to make an order based on the state of the law. Now those consequential orders, those orders that would have been based on the state of the law were not made by the court. So it, it, it's maybe be disrespectful to say that it, to address a court that uh, what it has done is a nullity or whatever, whatever however as a matter of fact it goes to no issue and nothing actually significant will affect the fortunes of those persons in labor uh, party and this that also, have amended, this, this, uh, emerged as this uh, also, winners this also looks like even if you've said it, it doesn't affect the candidates but again it looks more like the grand norm are uh, you talking about the base the base is the candidacy and the candidature of these people so if the court is fought in the candidates uh if you stretch it it will seem as if uh, if the if the candidature of these people in these states uh, are questioned by the court uh, it then means that perhaps some other things that they may have done thereafter uh, is also questionable. There is no doubt about the fact that the court has blamed the Labour Party, faulted the Labour Party for failing to comply with that, pro with that provision. What is the consequence? Is what we are discussing. Does it affect Alex Oti's uh, victory in, in, the, in, the, in the governorship polls of Abia State? No. However, it states clearly, perhaps for subsequent elections, that if you fail to do such and such a thing, you will be in breach of the Electoral Act, and that is capable of actually, uh, you, you know, robbing you of your victory. I must tell you, if that was filed as a pre-election matter by the right parties, particularly persons who participated in the primaries, the, uh, setting as to the asking that the court should set aside the, the the outcome of the primaries of Labour Party across the country, it would have been valid. It would have had consequences. And as a matter of fact, the, even after they approached the Supreme Court, there would be the danger that Alex Oti and perhaps other successful Labour Party, um, uh, you, you know, members in the various elections will have the elections set aside. But it's not so. It didn't fall within the bracket of what we can actually refer to as a, a pre-election matter. It also is not a matter before the tribunal, but it is validly a matter brought before the Federal High Court using the process of originating summons. And the court has done very well in the way it has made this declaration according to what it believes is the full interpretation of Section 77, Subsection 3. Well, uh, let, let's see if uh, Kende Edu uh, is uh, live now so that uh, he can now also uh, speak to us. Uh, let's move on uh, to Kende Edu, who is the legal advisor of the Labour Party. Kende, uh, thanks for your time. Um, perhaps uh, if you will, let us in on what the Labour Party uh, hopes to do in pursuit of this. Thank you very much for having me. Labour Party is not part of that at all by this judgment order. We have uh, looked at it and we have found out that it has not affected our fortunes in any way. It has not affected the fortunes of any of our elected candidates and they are good to go. From May 29, our candidates, our elected uh, governor in Abia and uh, members elect in the National Assembly, including our senators elect, House of Reps elect, House of Assemblies elect, they are going to be sworn in. They are going to occupy offices because this judgment has not affected us in any way. We have seen what has happened, what they filed before the court, and we have seen that, well, the court was misled to grant the order in the first place. And I want to also categorically state that the court itself said that it could not grant an order against Alessotti or any of our uh, members elected in Abia because they were not before the court. But the court will have also said that even members elected from other states, not even from Abia, only, not only from Abia, from other states, were not before the court. The defendants in that matter only INEC and Labour Party. And let me say, Labour Party was never served with that process. And uh, I don't I cannot speak for INEC, but Labour Party we were never served. I'm the National Legal Advisor, I'm the National Secretary at always. We did not receive any process. But in that court, we have a lawyer who was in, in Kano and got wind that some people were moving around in the court premises and he was able to identify some of our suspended former national officers. So he, he, he knew that there could be some mischief and found out that they have filed the matter and that court said he was going to hear the matter. The, the, the lawyer filed a preliminary objection and objected to the jurisdiction of the court. But somehow, 
I don't know what happened. I don't know how the, the court rushed and said that he was not even going to allow the processes, he was not going to allow the processes filed by the, our lawyer and said he was going to give judgment. But we have looked at the judgment and we have seen that in the first place, none of our elected uh, members, the governor elect was not a party, he was not a defendant. Our members, none of our members elect was a defendant, none of our senators elect, none of our uh, House of Assembly members elect was a, was a, was a party to that, was a defendant. And it is clear, it is a general principle of natural justice that you don't condemn a man on heart, that you hear from the other side. So we are, so we are not part of that at all about what has happened. We have not seen the judgment. We have only seen the judgment order that is flying around. We are going to get the judgment, maybe by tomorrow latest, look at it. But we are going to file an appeal for it to be set aside for whatever it is worth. But I'm telling you, the judge only expressed an opinion about what he thinks the law is. But I want to state clearly that Labour Party, we filed with INEC our register of members. We never shunned that responsibility. We filed our register of members, and it is in our province to say who our members are. A political party is supreme over its affairs. An issue of membership, it is a political party that can say, these are my members. All the members elect, including our governor elect in Abia, including our Senate, all of them are members of the party and contested primaries. And in the first place, that matter of whether somebody was qualified to contest an election in the first place, this is a pre-election matter, for God's sake. These people, the contested primaries, their names were published for, since last year. For example, for, for governorship, I think around July last year, the names of those who were successful in our primaries and the primaries of other public parties were published by INEC. And if anybody had a reason to challenge their candidature, that person should have gone to court within 14 days of the occurrence of the event. So now, that matter, if they want to call it a pre-election matter, that they are challenging the emergence of our candidates, then the statute bad. That court has no jurisdiction to listen to them. And if they are saying it's a post-election matter, when a person has been elected as either a governor or a senator or a, or a member of House of Rep or House of Assembly, the only way you can go to challenge that election is to go to an election tribunal. Seven days to the conduct of an election. Coming, an election, yeah. I, ele uh, kind of, I do, uh, apologies for buttoning. I, I think uh, I asked the same question of uh, Frank Tate earlier on, and I also bring that to you. But quickly here, uh, unperturbed, uh, I mean, uh, you're, you're not disturbed by the, the judgment, uh, by the order. Not at all. Uh, not at but all. quickly here, as soon as you're done studying this, uh, what's the next move by your party being the legal uh, advisor of the Liberal Party? Yes, it's a judgment of a court. We are not going to ignore it. We are going to go there to challenge the judgment, file an appeal, make sure that judgment is set aside. Though we are not, there is no injury to us, but we are going to make sure that judgment is set aside. And we are going to present our case before the court. We filed our register of members, both electronic and hard copy, with INEC. And INEC observed that we comply with everything we needed to comply with before they extended our primaries, wrote a report on those primaries. Those candidates emerged validly their names were published by INEC. Their names were published from July 22. Names were published by August, October 4 last year. Finalists of candidates were published. If anybody had any reason to challenge their candidates, you should have gone to court back to, should have gone to court to challenge it. Another, another feature of that judgment is that how do you expect a court in Kano to now be giving judgment against Alex Oti, who was not in that court, who was not a party, and who was not from that place? It is strange. But I want to say that the judge even said it in his own judgments that he couldn't give another against Alessuti and, and the members elect from Abia. I'm surprised that he did also say that even members elect from Kano and other places were also not before the court. I don't know who deceived the court, who misled the court that the uh, Labour Party was served. We ne were never served. We were so woody. But now that we have seen the order, for whatever it is worth, we are going to ensure that we, we file a notice of appeal to have it set aside so, so that this thing will be put to rest. But well, we want to state that one of the things that this judgment has brought about is the mischief and it is the, it is the, the harshest job that some of our suspended national officers have been sponsored to okay, do. I think you, you said that much earlier on. I'd like to thank you for your time, Kennedy Edu. Many thanks thank uh, for speaking much. with us here on.